Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are going to be talking about asthma with our good friend uh, Jonathan Pearson, who is the executive director of the Horizon Foundation of New Jersey. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, Steve. Let's uh, get a couple things out about asthma. Um, it's a disorder that causes the airways of the lungs to swell and narrow. Asthma is one of the most common recurring childhood illnesses. Correct. Correct. 300,000 children or more in New Jersey have been diagnosed with it. Yes, correct. Why is this such a big issue for Horizon? What are you doing about it? Well, through our foundation, we created a BEAM program. It's our signature asthma initiative. BEAM, B-E-A-M. BEAM, B-E-A-M, Breathe Easier with Asthma Management. Go ahead. And what we did is we, we looked at asthma as a, as a major um, prevalent disease impacting children. And we're focusing on kids 5 to 18. Um, and we looked at the data in terms of the most prevalence of asthma in New Jersey. And we also wanted to identify where those kids were, but also identify a partner uh, to help us deliver a program. So the Boys and Girls Clubs in New Jersey are good friends. They're our partner. They're delivering this BEAM program to 2,500 children, again, ages 5 to 18, in nine counties with the highest prevalence of asthma. So 2,500 children, their parents, their caregivers, uh, this program's going on. It's a pilot, pilot initiative. We invested over half a million dollars to create the BEAM program. Take a step back. Are, is it fair to say that asthma disproportionately affects children in inner cities? Well, when you look at the data, it's interesting because uh, you would think that urban settings, you know, yeah. high pollution and other factors, but um, even in, in rural settings, the agriculture runoff and other things. Uh, so, so the rates are high, not only in urban settings, but also in, uh, in rural and kind of suburban settings. And in New Jersey, there's nine counties that have the highest prevalence. So a county like Gloucester County, which you may not think has high so that's a rural rates, county? And, and, that's, and that's one of them. So, um, you know, you look at counties like Atlanta County and others, uh, as well as Essex here in um, the northern part of the state, sure. very high rates of asthma. Talk about the Boys and Girls Clubs, who we have a very close relationship with as well. They do wonderful work. What exactly is the program? Describe what goes on in an effort to deal with asthma for these children. So, you know, they, they impact about 75,000 youth every day. And they're a great partner. They have great infrastructure. And the children that they are um, working with day in and day out uh, are the folks that we want to get to, their parents, their caregivers, and those children. And through the American Lung Association, there's curriculum that they're using through this grant uh, to raise awareness around asthma, uh, to identify it in their population. Um, you know, kids that are, that are coughing, wheezing, other symptoms, other triggers of asthma, when those um, instructors at the Boys and Girls Club are evaluating their, their, uh, their kids in their program, if they may see a child that may have uh, some symptom of asthma, there's a referral process uh, to a physician for follow-up treatment uh, to manage the disease. But because we know it's not preventable. You, Hold you on, cannot... back up. Sure. Because I know a lot of people watching us are, are wondering, is asthma preventable? The answer is no. It's no. It's, is it treatable? It's treatable. Describe and it's, that. And the, the prevention piece is around the asthma attacks. So asthma attacks are preventable through management. So if you can manage the condition, children can have a very good quality of life and lead a very healthy lifestyle. So um, it ties back to healthcare costs as well. And when you look at the emergency room visits triggered by asthma, the latest data here in New Jersey from the, from the uh, Department of Health and CDC, over 53,000 ER visits because of asthma attacks. And most of those attacks are preventable. Um, again, you need to know the symptoms and understand how you treat the well, asthma attack. back up for a second again. So 53,000 53, visits over a year? In one year. In, into the emergency rooms related to asthma? Yes. Okay, so what exactly is preventable that would cause a child not to go to the emergency room because he or she has asthma? And what would happen to that child otherwise? Well, you know, when you, when you look at how you manage asthma, you need to look at those, those triggers and, and the symptoms of them. So if, if children are, are, are wheezing or breathing heavy, um, there's, there's medication. Is the idea to act quickly? Act quickly, and there's medication, inhalers, and other things to manage it and to kind of settle it down. Because, the, the, as you know, the asthma attack, the, the lungs uh, swell and, and narrow, so your breathing is compromised. So... If you're not educated on how to really treat the, the attack, you're running to the ER. You know, I'm a parent of three children. 
the middle of the night, what's the first thing you're going to think of doing? You're going to the you ER. Go to the ER. So. Especially if you're not, it's interesting because, John, if you're not, Jonathan, if you're not treating the asthma and it's getting worse, if you don't know what to do when it happens and it's getting worse, you're going to the emergency room. Absolutely. But so, if you're, so a national, ahead, national figure, Steve, so in New Jersey, it's about 53,000. And once they come in through the ER, then there's the, you know, about 16,000 uh, inpatient stays from that. So you come in through ER, get treated. Talk about cost. And, and then at the national level, it's 600,000 ER visits. And the cost is about 300 million annually. So I know we're concentrating on New Jersey as a New Jersey company, New Jersey Foundation. But it's a but national issue. It's a national issue, and, and the costs are, are um, astronomical. Real quick, why does the Horizon Foundation... I mean, what, I know you, and, and I don't have to say full disclosure because if you go on our website, you'll see the, the Horizon is an underwriter of public broadcasting and supports what we do. And you see they support nightly news, uh, um, NJTV News every night as well. But why, why this kind of initiative? Well, again, it goes back to 300,000 children. We want to raise the awareness of asthma, right? We want to heighten the awareness, educate parents, educate caregivers. Um, get to the youth that, that may be uh, suffering from asthma. But is that part of the mission? Help me understand that. Absolutely. Part of our mission is to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. So at the end of the day, we want everyone to be healthier, lead a healthier lifestyle. Uh, it ties to the promise of our company to enrich the lives of the communities and members that we serve. So it, it's, it's clearly um, tied directly to the work of the foundation uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and children... Uh, are, are a key part of that. You know, we want to make sure these, these children grow up healthy mm. uh, and lead a healthier lifestyle overall. And I happen to know, because I've, I've uh, done some leadership work there at Horizon, uh, some coaching and training, that you've talked about the fact in 2015 there are three areas you're going to be focusing on in the foundation. What are they again? So our foundation, our, our mission is to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. Our tagline is healthier together. And we have new, uh, new pillars of, uh, of giving. So we have a caring pillar, all around disease prevention and management, which includes asthma, diabetes, obesity, and oral health. And then we have a connecting pillar, which is all around health literacy, providing plain language and culturally appropriate language. Things around like comparable health, uh, health information uh, and, and cost of services and, and the role of a provider and institution. And then we have a creating pillar that's all around arts and culture, promoting health through arts mm -hmm. and culture. So those are our three pillars, caring, connecting, and creating, uh, under the umbrella of our, our new foundation strategy. Um, what would you say the number one leadership lesson you have learned in all of your work um, heading up the foundation and just as an executive, number one leadership lesson is? To me, it's listening. Uh, listening to individuals, um, leaders, listening to my team and others, uh, understanding what, what's going on in the communities that we serve. So absorbing all of that. It also helps when you do this job as well. Uh, Jonathan Pearson, who's Executive Director of the Horizon Foundation of New Jersey, appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, there, right there. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you, John. Thank you. The great. preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Investors Bank, PSE&G, Verizon Communications, the law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Cone Resnick. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.